students why is it that the heat always flow from higher temperature to lower temperature if first law says that energy of the system is conserved why do the flow of energy is directional to know about these things a uh, second law of thermodynamics came into existence and we are going to focus on that so hello i am dr rupasna and i'll be teaching you second law of thermodynamics its origin from the carnot cycle from the carnot engine and we will study the concept of entropy other thermodynamic functions such as gibbs free energy helmholtz free energy and uh, the application to know more about this topic you can refer to the book by s chan publishing and the link of the ebook is given in the description box so the first law of thermodynamics talks about the relation between internal energy heat and work we also have uh, studied the enthalpy as a state function or thermodynamic parameter what is the thing that first law could not explain and what was the you know need of second law of thermodynamics the answer is that according to first law of thermodynamics if i have one iron rod which is at uniformly let's say at a temperature t1 then the total energy of the system is conserved why can't i have uh you know one end of the iron rod at higher temperature one end at lower temperature the temperature gradient between this rod why can't i have uh the system energy of the system will again be conserved but why does the energy does not flow spontaneously from one end to another end so that means there is there is a need of another property which talks about the spontaneity why the uh, energy flow is directional to uh, understand this the carnot cycle or uh, sadi carnot uh, came into existence and he gave what is called the heat engine or the uh, carnot cycle or carnot engine he explained the first heat engine uh, the heat engine is a simple heat engine contains two reservoirs one is source another one is sink what happens is we take a fuel inside this container at a temperature t1 pressure p1 and volume v1 this is the initial state of this uh, combustible substance as we uh, ignite this this fuel what happens is the temperature of the system keeping the temperature constant the energy is given and this process so what will happen the engine will expand on its own and it attains a pressure p2 and volume v2 this first process is called isothermal expansion why isothermal because the temperature of this is constant this process is constant so uh, this is a first process of the cycle now after that we take out the heat the engine from the heat reservoir and we insulate it now when once we insulate the system uh, and allows it to expand again now during insulation the heat of the system there is no heat change allowed in the system and this uh, is called adiabatic expansion this is called adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion so during this also the system now attains pressure p3 volume v3 and temperature t2 after that the extra energy is given from the uh, engine to the sink that means we again need another heat reservoir which is acting as a sink and which will take the energy so that energy will be taken by the sink which is at temperature t2 now so uh, the system will give its energy and will cool down isothermally so the third process in the cycle is the isothermal isothermal compression and the fourth step again 
uh, we remove the sink part and now the system is insulated again. So during that part the system compresses again gets back to the original position and this part is called adiabatic compression adiabatic compression so according to carnot cycle this is a cyclic process according to carnot cycle a heat engine is undergoing various paths and is coming back to its normal position so uh, the efficiency how to know the efficiency of this engine uh, by making this diagram and by understanding the various aspects of it uh, if i draw a pv graph for this particular heat engine i am starting at position number position point a at a i have this state of a system the system is expanding on its own during isothermal expansion temperature remains t1 only so this first part is isothermal expansion the second part the system the volume of the system is again increasing and it is going to v3 this part is called adiabatic expansion then the sink comes into roll uh, and it takes up the energy and the system compresses so this is isothermal compression and this fourth part is adiabatic compression so we are reaching again at the state a this is a cyclic process of the carnot cycle now uh, according to the formula that we have learned if i write the change in the internal energy for a cyclic process we know that for a cyclic process the internal energy change is zero because we are reaching the, at the same point and I, as I told you in the previous video that all state functions are only dependent on the initial and final state irrespective of the path. So if it is a cyclic process state function value during a cyclic process comes out to be overall change is zero. Uh, but uh, the delta u overall is zero but it is made up of what all the uh, small small uh, processes that has taken place so you have uh, first is isothermal expansion i am representing it with u1 only it is u1 plus u2 delta u2 plus delta u3 plus delta u4 so uh, all these are your uh, change in the internal energy uh, during the adiabatic expansion we know that when it is according to first law of thermodynamics for adiabatic expansion and for adiabatic compressions your first law is when dq is equal to zero the change in internal energy is equal to work done work done by the system so can i write this as from first law u1 will be q plus q1 that is heat that uh, is in reservoir 1 heat from the source q1 plus w of what this is isothermal work this is u1 plus what will be u2 dq will be 0 w only adiabatic plus what is u3 u3 is q now this is isothermal uh, compression which is now sink which is giving the heat to the sink and the heat is q2 plus w adiabatic plus because again dq will be 0 so it will be w uh, adiabatic or w4 i can write this as w1 q1 w1 plus w2 plus q2 w3 plus w4 this is equal to 0 okay so this is the when cycle for cyclic process total internal energy change is 0 this is the formula uh, now applying sign conventions applying sign conventions so the heat q1 is given to the so given to the system so from the source so it will be positive 
for work done for expansion work we know that heat the work is done by the system on the surrounding so it will be positive again w2 will be positive because again it is a work of expansion adiabatic expansion then q2 it is the heat from the system to the sink so it has negative sign minus of q2 then w3 again will be minus because it is a work of compression again w4 will be minus because it is adiabatic compression on applying sign convention finally we got w on one side q on another side if we write so your w cyclic w cyclic will be w1 plus w2 minus w3 minus w4 so we can write w cyclic is equal to q1 minus q2 so efficiency of the heat engine is calculated from w cyclic divided by heat provided from the source uh, once you substitute it okay on substituting w cyclic here we get q1 minus q2 divided by q1 so efficiency comes out to be 1 minus q2 by q1 and as you can see from here efficiency is coming out to be less than 1 this is the main uh, conclusion or the uh, answer from the carnot cycle from the carnot engine that uh, the process is coming back to its original position but still efficiency of the heat engine is not 100 percent that means there is some factor which is governing the uh, reaction which is not uh, making heat getting converted 100 percent into work in this part we have covered the what is the need of other thermodynamic functions uh, we studied Carnot cycle that is the heat engine which is uh, working in a cyclic manner and how various processes are occurring in a Carnot cycle and uh, how we have derived the overall work in the process cyclic process and how the efficiency of the heat engine is calculated we found that based on the based on the formula based on the calculations that efficiency of the heat engine comes out to be less than 1 that means uh, you can never convert 100% of heat into work that means there is some other factor which is responsible for uh, which is taking up that extra heat and in the next we will learn about that factor to know more about this topic, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing and the link of the ebook is given in the description box. If you found this topic interesting, please like, share and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for future updates. the copyright holder.